Hi guys, this is Dr. MK and welcome to Ultimate Organic Chemistry. Guys, this video is made for BSc final year and MSc students. So the candidates who are preparing IET Jam, SET, GATE or CSR examination means you can watch these videos. The students who are preparing NEET or IET JE means you can watch some other videos of this channel because I am going to discuss one of the advanced topic of organic chemistry. Okay, So today I am going to discuss a reaction known as bailey selman reaction. So this bailey selman reaction involves the reaction of aldehyde, generally aldehyde is used as an electrophile. When it reacts with an alkene having electron withdrawing group, for example, here you have ketone which is considered to be electron withdrawing. When they react together in the presence of a catalyst known as 1,4 diazo bicyclo 222 octane. In short, it is called as DAPCO, which is a base catalyst. Okay, so it will lead to the formation of this compound where you will find a carbon carbon single bond formation between this alpha position of alkene part and this carbonyl carbon okay so if you happen to check the hybridization of these two uh, carbon atom here you have sp2 here you have sp3 so during the course of bailey selman reaction there will be a formation of sp3 sp2 cc single bond okay so it is it is common it will be varying based on that uh, based on that uh, whatever the electrophile that you are taking okay so it is not mandatory right so please remember so uh, if this question is asked in examination means you should be able to give the answer uh, as soon as possible so how will you able to give the answer so i'm going to discuss the shortcut okay so you have to write this aldehyde part first and also you have to write this alkene part where you have electron withdrawing group right so this hydrogen of alpha carbon will be reacting with this two centers okay so what happens here that oxygen is taking this hydrogen atom and this alpha carbon will be directly connecting with the carbon carbon okay so it will lead to the formation of or OH here you have double bond which is connected to electron withdrawing group here you have this hydrogen atom which is not necessary to mention okay so this is a shortcut that one can write uh, bailey selman reaction okay right so before going to the mechanism of this reaction i would like to discuss brief uh, history behind bailey selman reaction okay so in uh, 1962 so in 1968 uh, Morita and co-workers they reported a reaction of aldehyde with acrylonitrile this is said to be acrylonitrile in the presence of a phosphine catalyst known as tricyclohexyl phosphine leading to the formation of this compound okay so after uh, four years that is uh, in 1972 Baylis and Hillman they reported a similar kind of reaction where uh, the reaction of aldehyde which is reacting with that uh, uh, alkene having ester functional group in the presence of tertiary amine will lead to the formation of this compound so if you compare these two reactions here you have uh, that electrophile part which is aldehyde that is similar and here you have the alkene part which is connected to electron withdrawing group that is cyano here it is connected to ester which is also electron withdrawing group okay so it will lead to the formation of these two products here you have a similar set of uh, that, that arrangement of functional group okay so the reactant is similar that the alkene system which they are used that is also similar and the product also similar where the only difference that you can find here is that catalyst part here they used phosphorus that is phosphine based uh, catalyst they here they used amine based catalyst so that is a difference okay so uh, if you compare uh, these two reactions they are more or less similar and in recent days the reaction of 
Bellisilman, it is called as Morita Bellisilman reaction. Okay, so where you have aldehyde system or whatever the electrophile that you take. Okay, so here you need to use uh, alkene which is connected to an electron withdrawing group. So you have to use amine or phosphine based catalyst leading to the formation of this product. Okay, so this is a history behind uh, that that Bellisilman reaction. Okay, right. So now let us discuss the mechanism of the reaction. Okay, so this is the first reaction that I discuss initially uh, of this video. Right. So here uh, they used DAPCO as a catalyst. So I am going to uh, explain the structure of uh, DAPCO. So it is a bridged system where you have uh, a two carbon bridge between these two nitrogen atom. This, this center if you compare it is a six carbon ring, five, six, right. Okay, you have to write a six member ring and these two bridging can be written like this. So this DAPCO catalyst can be uh, drawn like this also or it can be drawn like this way also. Okay, so for your understanding, I'm going to use uh, this structure for mechanism purpose. Okay, so once this uh, nitrogen lone pair of DAPCO uh, is attacking this alpha beta unsaturated system via a 1,4 type mechanism, it will lead to the formation of this intermediate. Okay, so this is said to be 1,4 type addition or otherwise known as Michael type addition. Okay, so here the nitrogen has donated a pair of electron to this carbon, a positive charge is generated and here the pi electrons move towards oxygen atom, a negative charge is generated. Okay, so next is when this intermediate reacts with uh, benzaldehyde system, the electron comes back to this carbon atom and this alpha position of this alkene part attacks here and this electron moves towards oxygen atom. We know that the C double bond O can be drawn as del plus and del minus. Okay, So it will lead to the formation of this intermediate. So now this oxygen has to become neutral. So it abstracts this hydrogen atom and this electron will move towards this carbon atom and it will move towards oxygen atom. So leading to the formation of an enolate type of intermediate. Okay, So now when electron comes back the pi electron move towards this carbon atom and this nitrogen takes this electron and it will lead to the formation of DAPCO which can be utilized for the next catalytic cycle. Okay, So the catalyst is regenerated during the course of the reaction. Okay, So it will lead to the formation of this product. Okay, This is a mechanism involved in this uh, reaction. So some people will call claim this reaction go via E1 CB pathway and some people will say it goes via E2 pathway. So please remember. Okay. So now let us discuss the scope of uh, Bailey-Silman reaction. So initially uh, we have to uh, discuss the electrophile part, right? So I already said you can use aldehyde as an electrophile. Okay. So instead of aldehyde, you can also use uh, ketone, and you can also use imine part also. When you, if you use imine as an electrophile, means it is called as asa morita. Bailey-Silman reaction. So as a MBH reaction, they will say. Okay. So if if ketone means uh, it can be simple ketone or it can be a ketone is connected to an electron withdrawing group. Say for example, this is one to di ketone system also. Okay. So you can use uh, several type of ketone. Okay. I have given a general electrophiles. Okay. Right. So now let us discuss that alkene part. I already mentioned that alkene should be connected to electron withdrawing group. So the electron withdrawing group can be aldehyde or it can be keto or it can be ester so this compound is peculiar i, I think I, I need to spend some time so this compound is known as methyl acrylate so which is generally used in bellisilman reaction please remember okay so this compound is highly bad smelling compound if one drop of this methyl acrylate or ethyl acrylate uh, falls on the floor of your lab means the whole lab will get bad smell okay so you need to be very careful when you use this methyl acrylate because i had experience in my msc itself when i was doing my msc in bardas university uh, so i had this experience of handling this uh, that compound 
and uh, that 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 whole lab had a very bad experience so please remember so you need to be very careful when you use that uh, acrylate uh, kind of compound okay okay so uh, next is uh, you can use that acryl amide system where you have amide as an electron withdrawing group and you have acrylonitrile where you have a cyano as an electron withdrawing group and you can also use uh, nitro as an uh, that that, uh, that that electron withdrawing group and here you can use phosphonate as an electron withdrawing partner and you can also use sulfone so this reaction has variability because uh, when you change that alkene part you will get different kind of components okay so please remember so coming to the last thing that that is base that is very important here so you need to use base as a catalyst what base you have to use unhindered unhindered amine as a base catalyst please remember so what do you mean by unhindered so say for example here you have uh, triethyl amine which is also a base uh, where you have this lone pair but this lone pair will be uh, hindered by these three ethyl groups so i have given a 3d model for your understanding so this is nitrogen atom and this is that that uh, pink color you have uh, that lone pair and here you have uh, that ethyl functional groups okay so these three ethyl functional groups will be hindering this uh, lone pair so this base is not that suitable okay for this uh, bayless elman reaction okay i personally carried out reactions during my uh, msc itself i said before so you will find the reaction will undergo but you will get very low yield okay so uh, this is not a perfect catalyst what is the alternate to this uh, that catalyst of that the tertiary amine means so you have a catalyst known as dapco which i discussed already so if you happen to check the 3d model of dapco so this is a nitrogen atom okay so in that nitrogen atom the three carbon atoms are away from this lone pair so you can think about like this so this is a nitrogen atom means so this this three carbon atoms are away from this uh, the lone pair so the lone pair will be freely available to donate uh, to to the that that alkene part okay so please remember uh, that that here that that C C bonds are forced to, to occupy. Okay, so it is rigid. So it is not a flexible molecule. So uh, this will be a very good uh, base. Okay, so please remember. Okay, so instead of uh, DAPCO, you can also use quinucleidin. Also, you can use DMAP. You can also use DPU. So in uh, recent research work, the DBU catalyst is very important. So please remember it can be asked in CSR examinations. So they are asking only advanced type of questions in recent days. So this can be asked. Okay. So instead of nitrogen, you can also use phosphine as a catalyst. I have given only one example. You can use various type of phosphine as a catalyst. Here the catalyst name is uh, that is trimethyl phosphine. So that's all about that uh, the base catalyst okay so you need to remember that 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 uh, nitrogen should be tertiary even secondary uh, means also reported in recent years but it should be tertiary in general but that nitrogen load per should be sterically unhindered that means that that carbon atom should be rigid whatever that you are using say for example here also that lone pair will be away from the two carbon atom because it is a bridger system it will move towards in this direction only here you have uh, nitrogen atom so this also will be sterically unhindered and this nitrogen also that means here that electron will come here it will attack here so this is also occupied in a ring system which is also rigid in nature so this type of rigid system means uh, that, that that nitrogen will be more basic and it will be more reactive the reaction rate will be very faster okay so only drawback of this Bailey-Silman reaction is the rate of the reaction is slow okay so the rate means some reaction will be taking place 
two days, three days, four days, also even one week also I have seen the Bailey Silmar reaction. So that is a major drawback. Otherwise, the reaction is very much interesting. Okay. So only thing is you need to be very careful while handling methyl acrylate. Okay. Well, if you use methyl acrylate means uh, you need to quench with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide solution so that the smell will not be uh, coming. Okay. Because that will be hydrolyzed during the course of the quenching process. Okay. So that is all about this reaction. So guys, hope you understood bailey zillman reaction and its mechanism. In the next video, I'm going to discuss one of the questions which is asked from CSIR examination based on bailey zillman reaction only. Until then, take care. Bye.